which is another thing. And uh, I spoke of the relationship between the state of exception and uh, having to do with the relationship between law and life. And I think that this uh, immediately biopolitical meaning of the state of exception is a, an original structure uh, by means of which the law includes in itself the living through its own suspension. I think that it, it appears clearly in the military order uh, declared by the President of the United States, the November 13, 2001, which authorized the indefinite detention and uh, the trial by military commissions, not to be confounded with the, the ordinary military courts, of the non-citizen suspected of being involved in terrorist activities. We read the USA Patriot Act, voted by the Senate, the Congress on the October 2, allowed the Attorney General to detain the alien suspected of activity which would threaten the national security of the United States. But in this case, the, the alien had to be, after seven days, either expulsed or accused of any violation of the law. So the, what was new in the military order of President Bush was to completely cancel any juridical status of an individual, thus producing a being, a human being, juridically unnameable and unclassifiable. The Taliban captured in Afghanistan not only do not, uh, cannot be protected by the status of a prisoner of war, according to the Geneva Convention, but they, they, they they are not even, they cannot even be accused according to the American law. Neither prisoner nor accused, but only detainees, they are object of a purely factual sovereignty without a completely outside authority. So the only possible comparison is the juridical situation of the Jew and the late in the Nazi lager, which had lost not only the citizenship, but any juridical identity. Though perhaps they kept at least the identity of a Jew. So let's now try to analyze a little the structure of this very peculiar juridical institution. The most rigorous attempt to Built to give a theory of the state of exception is, alas, unfortunately, at the work of Karl Schmidt, the great jurist who compromised with the Nazi regime. And he made this essentially in two books. The first one published in 1921, the book on dictatorship. And the second one published the following year on the political theology. So let's, uh, let's uh, dwell a little on these two very important books which are strictly connected. In these two books, Schmidt's effort is to inscribe the state of exception in a juridical context. This is the goal of the theory. Schmidt knows perfectly that the state of exception being a suspension, I quote, a suspension of the whole juridical order seems to be completely external to any possible juridical consideration. And I quote again, in, in its uh, factual consistence and in its intimus sub substance, it cannot have the form of law. Nevertheless, though he's aware of this, what is essential for Schmidt is precisely to ensure at any price a relationship between the state of exception and the juridical 
I quote, State of exception is always different from anarchy and chaos. And in the juridical sense, there is still in it some order. So, the paradoxical status is that something external is nevertheless still in relationship in some way to the law. So, that's what he tries to do in the book, tries to describe, to maintain, to ensure the relationship between the state of exception and the law. And he makes it in two different ways. I'll try now to analyze very quickly how he does it. In the first book, what uh, the device the operator of this description of an, an outside in the juridical order, in the first book, the, the dictatorship, is the distinction between uh, norm and application of the law. Carefully distinguish in the law of norm and then another part of the law which concerns the application and the rest of the religion. This for this, uh, for this kind of uh, dictatorship, which he, he defines commission, commissioner, commissioner dictatorship, which is, a, which is a dictatorship which is meant to still uh, work in order to maintain the constitution, the, the, the actual constitution. And then there is another dictatorship, which he called the sovereign dictatorship, which on the contrary tries to install a new. So for the first figure of the dictatorship, the commission of dictatorship, the operator of the description is the distinction of these two aspects of the law. And for the second figure, the sovereign figure, is the distinction between constituent power and constituted power. It's the old, again, French theory of the pouvoir constituant. Pouvoir constituant. So he, he, so he can, through this distinction, finding in law an element which seems to be <coughs> external to law, for instance, the pouvoir constituant. Through this distinction, is, Schmidt is able to inscribe the state of exception still in a juridical context. So you can see it's, uh, it, in any case, it is something, there is still something as a constitution suspension of the Constitution. The suspension of the Constitution, there is still something as, as a minimum form, minimum form of Constitution. So that's the first book. Let's now go to the second book, The Political Theology. Uh, often the attention of the scholars uh, have, has, has been uh, concentrated, focused only on the second book, The Political Theology, while it is in the first one that he really establishes the theoretical frame. So in the second book, the, what allows the description of the state of exception and juridical order is the distinction between two fundamental aspects, two other similar but different uh, elements of the, of the law. It is the norm and the decision. One of the main, uh, most important things in the uh, uh, conception of the law and the society is is to clearly under, underline the fact that we are accustomed to think of law only in terms of norm, so law in strict sense, a norm. This is only part of the law, there is a the other part, at least as important as the first one, which is the decision. For instance, let's say all the huge building of the processual law, the trial, this, without a concrete decision, the law is dead. 